Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Slice, a podcast that's focused on elevating the wealth of Africans globally and is sponsored by Kebum. My name is Toby David, and I'm here with... Yeah, hello, guys. So we have, a, like, we have an amazing guest um, today with us, and I met him over four years ago, and we've been really close since then. Um... Mm. <laughs> David... <laughs> So his name is no, it's, it's drum roll. I can't do drum roll, so I'm I'm drumming the roll. You understand? I'm drumming drum the roll. Mr. Or oh, he was when I met him. Actually, he was head of trust at Quantum Zenith. Um, the, but before that, he was actually a team lead for private trust at FCMB. From Quantum Zenith trust, he went on to be head of trust at Zenith at Investment One. Um, his last um, job role was around head of trust at ARM, one of the biggest non-financial or non-banking financial institution here in Nigeria. And he is currently the co-founder of Finlay. I think Nigeria. they are the biggest. I think they are the yeah, biggest. One of the biggest. Yeah, oh, one of the biggest. Yeah, they are the biggest. So I just, I just so that you don't like shrink the magnitude of the work. <laughs> you understand? Of the position. <laughs> Let Jack on more. <laughs> Jacob Moore, <laughs> is the biggest <laughs> man. <laughs> please, please go on. Please go yeah. on. <laughs> and That's he's also right. a partner. Right. He's also a partner at Rex and Noble Law Office. Um, they provide um, bespoke legal services to a lot of private, private clients, um, both um, nationally and internationally as well. So thank you so much, Sheo, for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Thank time. you, Sheo. Looking forward to the conversation. Thank you, thank you for having me. It's a huge <laughs> pleasure, privilege. Thank you, guys. Uh, awesome. So, um, before we, you know, get right into it, like, how how does it feel like working in all of these companies at Head of Trust? Like, what you you've mm. done almost, you've been in every aspect of the financial space. Like, how does it feel like, you know, going through that in the last, I don't know, close mm. to almost almost a decade of a decade plus right now? Well, um, I, I think I think. That's also, that's a trick question because, you know, <laughs> mm. the other thing that people will ask is that, um, why have I moved around so much? <laughs> yeah. And we don't want to get into that, you know. Uh, yeah. but, but, but I, I think it's, it's, it's been a huge privilege walking in, um, you know, those places. They all came with unique experiences. Yeah. And I, and I think yesterday, um, just yesterday, I was still thinking back to, for example, my time at, um, at Zenith, um, and, and the whole process, you know, so there was like a crescendo. Um, so, I mean, this is, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it can be for public consumption, but leading up to my taking up that role at Phantom Zenith, I had to meet with the chairman, um, uh, Mr. Jim Ovia, you know, and I can remember how that whole process, um, well, I think it's if I if I was going to talk about the highlights of my career, I'll probably talk talk about things like that. So that things that mean something to me. But it's it's yes. it, it, it's been it's been a privilege. Uh, it was a privilege to work in all these places, and um, um, like I said, unique experiences, in different um, companies. So I feel like I have an edge in, in that regard. Definitely. When we're talking about um, the industry. You know. Yeah. So I'm mm. saying it all, done it, done it, done it all. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah. do you think, so, I mean, one of the things that I've noticed in your career is that you've, you've been mm. heavily in the private clients, private trust um, aspect of things. What does that really mean? Like for the average person that is actually listening to us, like what does... Mm -hmm. private trust mean what does private what what, who, what what does that mean for the person listening to us at this point in time? okay so let me try to break it down um it's a simple thing really uh it's just a mm -hmm. picture um so think of what i do on a daily basis uh which is um okay well within the financial services sector right or the industry you have the general term you have wealth managers right you know how yeah. yeah. people who are specialized in different areas you have the core investment bankers uh you have the stockbrokers you have different kinds of people who offer different kinds of services and products uh so my specialty is trust right and 
while we're talking about trust also, that we have people who are experts in public trusts, which is you're offering trust services to public institutions, say government. So anybody who who is within the space of say who's a specialist with bonds, for example, you know, for okay. every bond. I don't want to go into all the details. Yeah. Uh, because it might confuse our people. Uh, but you have public trusts, private trusts, and corporate trust. Uh, we met what the transaction we met on is corporate trust because it was a corporate transaction. Now, mm -hmm. when you now take it to the private side of things, which is um, what are you doing to manage the wealth of individuals, private individuals, mm -hmm. as opposed to corporate or public institutions, then we're talking about private clients or private okay. trusts, you know. Uh, so, so private clients is a wider concept, which is just to talk about people from the lower end of the spectrum. Mm. Oh, no, no, I don't know. I don't know what's in your bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, so you have, you have the, uh, the mass affluence, uh, I don't look like to use the word retail clients, yeah, but the mass affluence people, the everyday people who are just trying to increase their wealth, invest. Yeah. And then you have the people who have already made some money, you know, uh, yeah. so the, the high net worth individuals. So mm. in, 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 in some jurisdictions, when you're talking about private clients, they are trying to differentiate between the haves and the have nots. Sorry to use that term, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but, but that's, I mean, at the end of the day, if you have made, uh, over a million dollars, um, if you have a million dollars in, in investable funds, you know, investable assets, then uh, you are the highness of individual. So but most the of the time, yeah. So most of the time, yeah, that, 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 to... that's the global definition, really. Um, okay, gotcha. Highness mm. of individuals, one million dollars in, in investable, investable funds, in investable assets. Gotcha. Uh, ultra high net worth <laughs> individuals, <laughs> uh, $30 million. Uh, I'll still go into some of the uh, statistics that, uh, I think you were interested in earlier, uh, yeah. but, but that's it. Uh, so private clients, you tend mostly to speak to, um, the high net worth uh, end of the, the landscape. Kind of thing. You know, so that's what I'll call it. Yes. So you, you, you spent like most of your career dealing with, I just want to give like context to the, to the listeners that he has spent most of his ah. career really dealing with oh, oh, high net worth individuals, you know, yes, and yes, yes, yes. That, that's, mm -hmm. I, that's what I've always, in fact, when I wanted to come into the finance, but I wasn't in the financial services industry, uh, yeah. from the beginning, uh, so my background is law, uh, and, and I, and I worked for a while as, uh, as an in-house um, lawyer, a solicitor in different companies, you know, uh, but mostly within uh, the, well, what you now call mobility work. Let me call it logistics. Logistics okay. and um, telecoms. You know. Okay. So I was within that space. But so when I wanted to move to another industry, um, when that opportunity came, I, I was particularly interested in the private side of things as opposed to the corporate side of things. Uh, even though I ended up doing everything, I mean, it's, it's such a, such an interesting, um, area that not, not many professionals even come into, especially lawyers, they don't pay so much attention to, to what people like us do, you know, but if you look abroad, you see that it's properly defined and, um, people there are professionals who make a career out of that. So, 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 so that's what I'll, I'll say. Yeah. So I've done, I've done private clients, private trusts, uh, and you probably see more content around that from me because that's where my interest, not that I wasn't doing any other thing, uh, but for close to a decade. Yes. Uh, so a decade out of about, about, um, 18 years now of work. So people take, yes. Uh, they're saving the money for it, yes. <laughs> David. 
Like, is, it, is that? <laughs> I said basically swimming in when, money. When, when, when you, when you, you hit, don't worry about it. <laughs> no. When you hit 20 years, I, I think you should do one or two parties. Just do 20 years. One or two parties. <laughs> Oh, well, um, I'm so to provide... my, my internal patterns. Ah, yeah, okay, go. awesome, awesome. Ah. So for the podcast today, just to provide, because we usually do this thing where we just start the podcast and we just get into it, mm-hmm. just because there's a lot to cover. So let me backtrack yes. a bit for people who don't understand why we are here. So the topic for mm-hmm. today's episode is that we're going to be talking about the financial DNA of high net worth individuals. And we brought someone who is a doctor, of high net worth individuals. You were hearing what you were saying. It was talking about 18 years experience. If you've been a doctor for 18 years, you know, you know, you know, there are some doctors you, you hear that, oh, they will first tell you, how are you feeling? And they can just diagnose. So that's why we brought this, the doctor of high net worth individuals. <laughs> and the reason why we are doing this is, <clears throat> sorry, the reason why we are doing this is because the, most of us, we want to increase our wealth. And there are people mm-hmm. who have done this. So one of the easiest ways to also get to that point is, oh, what are these people doing? How do they do it? And how, in my own small way, can I, can I start doing it? Because a lot of people have this belief around, oh, it's going to be a lottery. It's going to be a miracle. Mm-hmm. $30 billion will fall in your account one day randomly. And the probability of that happening is very very slim to none. I mean, we'll ask you later. Maybe maybe it happens. The doctor will tell us. So we are now talking about, okay, what are the steps? What are the things that they do? And that's why uh, we are here to speak to Shim. So the first question I have concerning our topic for today is that, okay, what would you say is the biggest mistake when it comes to money that the average people have? Well, okay, let me not say mistake. What is the biggest mm. misconception about money that the average people have that high net worth individuals don't have, don't believe in? Do you, do you understand my question, Shane? I totally understand. Um, oh, okay, and, and awesome, I think awesome, it, awesome. Yes, yeah, so to answer that, I think it's something that I would say uh, I battle with daily. Uh, and when mm. I say I battle with, uh, and I'm talking about as a professional speaking to people, okay. you know, it, the number one problem is that it, it's um, making money and sustaining wealth is a mindset thing, you know. Uh, mm. So there's a knowledge part, right? You know, but before you even you know, come upon that knowledge, you must have a particular mindset. So maybe I should use. Uh, not particularly a personal example. So what was my motivation, you know, for okay. choosing fa- private trust, for example? I was, I was simply interested in, um, uh, I'll backtrack a bit. So I grew up in Ibado, right? And, and I, I grew up in an, in an estate called, uh, I spent most of my years in an estate called Odi Odi Estates, uh, which, I mean, I had a lot of, uh, Companies, so it's partially a residential and an industrial estate. Yeah. Uh, so I noticed for that for a long time. Well, well, let me put it this way: I noticed that most of the companies, most of the industries that were there, were owned by foreigners. And when I say foreigners, I mean I don't need to be discriminatory, uh, but yeah. really non-Nigerians, non-Nigerians, so yeah. Lebanese, Indians, and I. Without any envy, I was simply interested in how they were able to, you know, sustain themselves over the years. Maybe to give specific examples, I know, for example, that uh, the Zad brothers. Um, so you have Zatek, you have. Uh, um, I'm trying to look for the ones you that most people will know. Zatek is quite a a big brand. Um, there's Vina. There's a, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of these other company. Anyway, so that chains of companies, uh, Sweet Gold, you know, or is it a, mm. one of those places, you know, make every day, they, make, they produce every day products and then they do not only create wealth um, for their families, they create wealth within the society. 
right? And contrasts, if you compare that to uh, a lot of Nigerian businesses, okay, so the real meat of that story is that the Zad brothers have been here, I think since the beginning of the century, uh, because I know, for example, that Dr. Mm. Zad was was born in Ibadan in 1933 or 1934. What? And, um, yes, yes, so he will be 90 something wow. now. Yeah. Wow. So, so and, and I believe that that's his second generation. That's, he, he and his brothers are like the second generation of um, people who settled in, in Ibadan and have won businesses from that time. So, of course, mm -hmm. the businesses may be metamorphosed into other things, but mm -hmm. there's wealth creation, you know, there's a mindset, yeah. there's a way they also handle succession to um, the next generation. So, I've also worked mm -hmm. at a company when I was in, in telecom space in Lagos. Uh, so, this particular company, second generation, I think, or third. Second, second generation. Wow. They had been here since 1947. They're, they're there at Akedimi. You know, this is that you, you probably want to know. You know. Anyway, bottom line is that I was quite interested uh, in learning about wealth because, you know, I come from a family of professionals. Uh, and when I say professionals, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're a journalist, yeah. uh, this, you're that. So it's not a much. It's about work for 35 years and then retire to the simplicity of Ibadan <laughs> or Lagos, because I have, I have people in Lagos also. But bottom line is that you had people who, um, I, 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 I felt that um, in order to create sustainable wealth, in order to, even though we went poor, you understand, but there had to be more, you know. Um, I have to challenge my mindset to think, oh, look, sure, you can't just spend 35 years and retire, you know, um, to nothing, really, most of the time, you know. Uh, you can't spend 35 years and retire to nothing uh, and just start spending your pension, unless maybe that's what you want to do, really. Uh, but not yeah. everybody is as motivated as you. Know. But if you think about it, now I think of, I, I, I think I made the right decision having that mindset or developing that mindset simply because if you look at where we are right now, you realize that what we need in society um, is a multitude, a critical mass of wealth creators, you know, uh, not people, we have enough people who are professionals, we have people with two master's degrees uh, who are not necessarily yes. wealth creators. They're adding value to society, but yes. we don't have enough money. In society, we don't have enough. We're not as much as we call ourselves a capitalist society. We're not as capitalist as as the Americans, for example. Uh, yes. Very they have a lot of. Yes. If you compare the numbers, if you go deep, do a deep dive, not a, not a surface dive <laughs> into numbers of all, uh, high net worth individuals, you'd be shocked at the gap. You know, meanwhile, this is a very rich continent. This is a very rich country. Rich. You know, mm. if the individuals really tap um, internally uh, into their, their resources. So we need more people who, we need, I mean, I'm a lawyer, quite all right, but I don't want to say we have enough lawyers, but yes, there will always be people <laughs> who, will, who will study law. You understand? We, we will have yeah. lawyers, but we don't, we don't have enough wealth creators. We don't have enough entrepreneurs, let me put it that way. We don't have enough, yeah. you should call them businessmen back then, businessmen. <laughs> you know, now it's, it's entrepreneurs. We don't have enough of them. And I think it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And so back to your question, um, one key thing mm -hmm. is, is that mindset, you know, the difference between people um, who end up with considerable wealth, you know, and people who who are just there. Let me put it that way. Uh, it's it's just a mindset, you know, uh, and, and, and and it permeates every society, every uh, fabric of every uh, aspect of the society. Because if we think about it, 
I don't know what the cliche is, but really, uh, poverty is in the mind. You, uh, mm. It starts with you just having a different mindset. Uh, so I'll say that lies, if you think about it that way, that is at the very base of, um, you know, if you scale down the brain of the wealthy person or somebody who doesn't even use the word wealthy, you understand? People who have, uh, who are financially literate enough to understand that, look, I need to do this in order to make money. Uh, and it's not just mm. earning a salary because if the business owners didn't start a business, then nobody is there to pay yourself. So let me just end it there for now, you know, just to explain it's, it's all, it's a mindset thing. Yeah. Thank you so that's, much. That's just, yeah. Thank you so much. Shane. So I have, so I have one observation and two questions mm -hmm. based on what you said. So my observation mm -hmm. now is that is, <clears throat> I like to call you a doctor. So for the purpose of this podcast, <laughs> let's use the term doctor. I like my doctor. Right. <laughs> my doctorate. Yes. <laughs> oh, do you have a doctorate? I don't have. I don't have one. Okay, okay, it's okay. It's in the works. Okay. Hey, that one is, it's in the works. Is, aha. When we are doing 25 <laughs> years, it will be there by then. Anyway, so, <laughs> uh, so the observation I made, well. the observation I made from what you said, so mm. based on what Dr. Shion is saying, what I am understanding on my own end is that high net worth individual is not the fact that they have 30 million in the bank, like spare 30 million, that they just have it resting there. What makes the high net worth individual mm. is the mindset of always growing that money by providing, mm. by creating wealth, not providing, by creating wealth. So is that what you're trying to say? Mm. Or is that what's... Oh, so after this, I'll go into the definition of the actual definition of I mean, okay. high net worth yes. But to, the distinction I wanted to make uh, between people who are savvy, you know, uh, people who mm. understand how money works. Okay. And take that knowledge and translate it to, to, into, oh, let me now invest. Or let me even approach... Okay. Um, there are people who see the need for um, a team, you know, starting with an investment advisor, you know, uh, and if you can't afford one, you know, okay, let me start with investing in a mutual fund, for example. So those okay. kind of things are things that somebody who is um, on the way to prosperity, on the way to wealth, Okay. You have in his mind, you understand, as opposed okay. to people who are just out to survive every day, mm. you know, which is what we have. Uh, we have a lot of people who are. I mean, if you mm -hmm. go into the streets now, there are many people who have a lot of potential to make more money, but because they've been um, conditioned, there's a set. They've been conditioned. There's a certain mindset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go to school, uh, leave school, start working, get a good job, you know. And how many good jobs are there? Really? <laughs> get yeah. a good job. Um, and then at the end of the day, uh, your employer thanks you after 20, 25 years. Days, days. Uh, and back in the days, it used to be fridge and TV. <laughs> and mm. that's it. <laughs> you know? it's so, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, 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 so that's the difference between um, wealth creators and um, um, I, I want to make that distinction. Yeah, so it's it's mm. a distinction between wealth creators and um, the the everyday people. Everyday people have their place, quite all right. Because yes, we all can yes. reach. I'm not rich yet. So, so would you say, would reach. you say the model <laughs> of would you say the model of because how we've been trained how mm. how we're raised up. I mean, we are not in the same generation, but like from, let's say, your generation down to, mm. let's say, people born in, down up to, let's say, even 2005. Let's, I don't know mm. how anybody after 2005, that one, to me, you are still, anyways. But my point <laughs> yeah. is, that one is gen, gen, no alphabet. 
But <laughs> my point is that my, my question there is that mm. there's this model that we all it's like yeah. a pathway. Mm. Finish school, mm. get a job. Mm. You know, you based on your experience, based on how you because you've been in the industry now for 18 years. So you've seen trends, you've mm. seen shifts, you've mm. seen changes. How mm. sustainable is that model in this day and age that okay, I will do this, 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 and at the end of the day, I'll be wealthy. Or I will do this and at the end of the day, I'll be financially. Also, also another thing mm. to also factor in, especially in this day and mm. age, is children. Yes. Is the cost of children. Because a lot of people when they <laughs> when they talk about money, they always look at yeah. it that okay, by 40, I'll have 10 million naira. But you forget that when you're 40, there is a child mm. that is taking money every month, every three months, there's of school course. fees. When they of are course. done, they might want to go abroad. And you're not mm. working then because you'll be 50, 60. And there's, there's four you're there's forex. The there's with. forex, there's inflation, <laughs> there's inf like the yeah. price of sending oh, a child to, to school in the UK ten years ago is nothing like it is today. So, like two years ago, based on all ten years ago, yeah. Th th thank you, thank you, doctor. So, <laughs> based on, based on, based on everything that has happened now, we do still say that mm -hmm. that model is sustainable. That okay, let me just. Finish school, uh, enter job. Okay, so so um, I think there needs to be. Um, I'm not one for throwing out uh, the baby with the bathwater, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a place of education, very important. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but there's there's we need changes to how we approach mm. education. You know, right now education in in most of our universities is still by yes. roads. You know, you Shil, have, do you mind saying the then, school you went to, like the university you went to? I went to a local. Sorry, don't let me. Don't let me uh, pop that. <laughs> I went to Olap. <laughs> I went to Olap in Obadjo University, which oh, okay. is, I, I entered Obadjo State University and I finished from Olap in Obadjo University. Changed the name. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, so I went to part of the set, State okay. University. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I part of what I said. Yeah. So I went to uh, Olap in Obadjo University. Uh, and um, part of my rebellion um, when I started studying, mm. studying law, so so I had I think I had um, a different idea of what university education was supposed to be like, you know, um, maybe from too much exposure to books and yeah. um, and TV, you know. So uh, I think there was a culture shock when I saw that was we're, we're just cramming and especially in law, you know, just cram. Put down your crown and pull, you know, and the people who were doing that were rewarded. But people like me who were more critical, you know, in thinking, you know, who, I, want, I want to understand what, what, why, why is this? Yeah, there's this principle, there's this blah blah blah. But why is it like this? We went, so by two hundred level, I was already to solution. It's not showing mm. my grades anyway, but I, I sat up in 400 level again. Uh, uh, so I think if, if I were to start with anything, I think education plays a huge role. You know, so the approach to education has to be uh, very, very modern. When I say modern, universities have to be secondary schools. I'll start from secondary schools. Yes, yeah, secondary schools, universities have to be. Um, in tune with the times, you know, in time, uh, you yeah. can't keep pushing people towards the traditional careers. You know. And I'll tell another story. Uh, so I remember our GSC exam, uh, that's junior white, right? That's from going yeah. from junior school to, to senior, yeah, senior school. Um, I remember that. So I went to government college in and um, back then we had a guide, guidance counselor who observed why he's, I mean, I respect him, you know. But then what I noticed was that, okay, so I had, I can't remember what exactly, but I think I had more, um, my A's were in, in English, the languages, English, of course, you, uh, <laughs> you know, English. Yoruba, I can't remember the third subject, and I had C's in all the other subjects. And 
automatically without speaking to me. You understand? Mm. They just said, oh, this boy is a social science candidate. You know, he's not in quotes dull to be placed in, in the arts. You know, that was the mentality mm. then. You know, the A the yeah. students were placed in. I, I, don't, I don't know. Okay, so yeah, I'll agree that we're from slightly different, we're from the same generation, <laughs> but from slightly different things I started mm. changing probably mm. when you guys went to school. Yeah. yeah. That was what it was like then. They just shoved me to social sciences class. So you had sciences, you had social science, and then you had arts. And if you think about it, that already set the tone for my for my journey. You know, I had to make mm. some changes later because you you have to ask me how I ended up with law. You know, I had to spend yeah. an extra year just to make that switch. Mm. But anyway, that shows you the kind of problem that we have. You know, in terms of education. So if we bring it back to what we're talking about, can we start? My daughter now, uh, so they have extracurricular, uh, what they call them, extra, not extracurricular, curricular sort of like extra. Yeah, so they have uh, some special classes. So they have uh, optional courses. You know, uh, actually, I saw that they had entrepreneurship. In primary school, I said, okay, hmm. choose entrepreneurship because you must make money in this life. <laughs> <laughs> and then, very key. I mean, it, it, I, I'm, I'm so happy now. Um, the little things matter really now, you know, and, and it goes back to this mindset thing that we're talking about. So, my daughter now keeps records of um, money that she earns. So, of course, if hmm. somebody gives you visits and gives you money. Or if she does something for me, you know, and I say, okay, I'll give you money because you did this. You understand? It's a deliberate thing on my part to yeah. get her to know or learn about money. So this is this is how the kind of value you have to place on money. You have to work for money. <laughs> you know, you have to do something in exchange. You know. So I give her money sometimes. People give her money. And then she keeps details. I think I posted this on Twitter some years ago. So maybe it was last year. But my daughter actually told me that I was owing her 55000 Now that I'm on, wow, I'm, wow. Tell you, I'm, tell, I'm telling wow. you, I'll look for that tweet. Wow. But she did tell me that. Like, you know, And I like the man mindset because that's the kind of generation we need to be raising. Or people very early on uh, understand yeah. what money what money is, you know, and how to make money, how to sustain, you know, how money how mm. making, from making a little translates to wealth. Mm, then, mm, 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 and I'll mm, talk mm. about things like succession, you know, and, and mm. that's I, I think that's also the difference between, uh, say, like our society and I'll use the American society wealth creators in America. And that's why the country is just great, whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know. So um, anyway, so 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 that's just it. You know, you have to start from education. You know, and that's why um, I'm also passionate about financial literacy. And that's why I started something regarding that. You know, because people need to learn about money. People need to know how important money is. If you're broke, you trust me. I've been broke many times and I know, I won't tell you I'm broke right now, but I know that mm. it's not a good place to be in. Uh, um, anyway, let, let's just continue. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's essential. If we want to get out of, out, out of, let's say, the kind of rot we're in now. Trust me, if we had a lot of wealth creators in Nigeria, then we don't even need to depend so heavily on heavily. the government. Yes. Uh, you know. And if you look closely at the American society, you realize that the reason why the, that society can, the government can tax its citizens heavily is simply because you have enough people who are actually creating wealth. that wealth. Creating wealth. It's, 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 it's that simple. You know, thank you so uh, much, Shane. Yeah. So, thank, thank, thank you so thank much, Shane. Yeah. 
So, yeah. so yeah. I don't want to because I have based, every time. Anytime we speak like this, there's like things I'm questions forming, yeah. observations, and all that. <laughs> but I don't want to take up all this space because you mentioned something very mm. profound. You mentioned not just making the money but sustaining mm. it, which is very oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. wisdom. Wisdom. So uh, let me. Give the floor to Jam to also go ahead and ask any questions you might have. Yeah, I think maybe the thank you so much, Jam, um, for the nuggets. Um, one of the things I've always been fascinated about is how um, wealthy people look at risk and return, right? Because at that pace in your life, you're mm. sort of you've made money. Um, you don't want to lose mm. it, right? Um, when you compare mm. it to the average people like they want to maximize as much money like their mind is like how do i get this money to double every two to seconds mm. if i can do that that would be fantastic mm. so like what mm. what general mindsets from a risk reward perspective how mm. you know your clients see you know mm. investing what kind of investments mm. are they looking at right now that can sort of multiply or build their wealth long term you know from your perspective yeah mm. okay so so I, i'd like to answer that question from I don't want to answer it from the client's um, perspective because it, one of the key things right now, okay, so closely related to what we've been talking about is the fact that wealth managers have a huge role to play. Um, and this is me speaking from the perspective of somebody who plays um, in a specialized field in, in that landscape within that landscape wealth managers have a huge play um, and i'll explain what i mean by that um so you mentioned the fact that okay so how should the average client look at risk and return there are basic principles you know and everybody knows it uh, it's simple we hire the risk we hire the return right mm-hmm. uh, but, but, but beyond that kind of cliche, um, what should the wealth managers? My pastor likes to say, what does the Lord say? <laughs> so from time to time, uh, the clients should be asking their wealth advisors that, okay, what is the market saying? Where should I invest? Uh, and then you now go, okay, so let me lay down the general rule now. So yes, the higher the risk, the higher the return. But then you also think about safety. You know, are you looking for safety at this point of your life? Are you looking for to build aggressively? Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you looking to just take things easy? You know, so I'll explain what I mean by that. So the way I'll advise a 20 year old, it's not the same way I'll advise a 50 year old. And there will be a clear distinction between how I'll, how, I'll, how I'll advise a 45 year old and how I'll advise a 70 year old person who, who's looking for what to do. You know, uh, so do you want to be, uh, when should you be aggressive with your investments? When should you take higher risk? And this is, of course, not to encourage people to anyway once you go to a professional anyway you will never end up in the hands of um ponzi schemes or, or people who offer fantastic returns uh in exchange for you know your money uh, so bottom line is that there are i would say that yes at some point you should be taking um risks in terms of investment in order to build that wealth you're looking at, you're looking to build aggressively, you know, especially in a Nigeria of these days. This may not be a popular yeah. way of looking at it, you know. But trust me, <laughs> the current economy is saying it's not saying double your hustle. The current economy is saying that quadruple your hustle. You know, you mm. have to because people are falling down the ladder fast. Uh, yeah. and, and, and I think we'll have to, I think right after this, I'll have to speak about um, high net worth individuals again and what that composition or all that. So yeah. what's the line? I'm saying that um, the way I advise a 
25 year old who and well you know uh, I, I'll very likely be telling that person to you know be out definitely everybody needs a diversified portfolio of investments because you can't um, put your all your eggs in one basket you need a at, at every point you need to diversify your 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 assets right so you have some stock you have some you have some money market instruments you have you know different kinds of things but the speed uh, the risk is what we're talking about here how how risky should that be leave that to a professional portfolio manager and investment manager for for them to handle that's the advice i always give people let let the professionals handle that at any point do you understand so there's a time to be aggressive with your investments there's a time to slow things down this is time to just you know um um, after making that money aggressively, you now have to protect. That says, okay, so you make sure, to make sure that you are not losing value. You understand? You are not. Your assets are not depleting. We'll get back to that now. And then in your seventies, definitely, or in your sixties, you're definitely looking at retirement. You're looking at different kinds of things. You know, so you slow down at that point. So at that point, you're only looking at safety. You're not looking at. Mm -hmm any aggressive accumulation you understand you're not looking at taking higher risks you know, so that's to break it down simply that's that's how it is yeah. let me quickly go to um uh the breakdown and it's of individuals and it's what's individuals so yeah like i was like i was saying earlier global definition a high net worth individual somebody who has at least one million dollars in investable funds um, at any point in time. And then ultra high net worth, uh, if you have over $30 million, uh, slight differences in different regions, but that's the globally accepted one. Now, let's come to Nigeria. As at 20, we only had, okay, so how do I put this now? Okay, so when you're looking at um, people who had crossed that one million dollar mark. We know that the dollar is the mm -hmm. is the yes. beyond, is the beyond is the beyond sea of currencies. <laughs> mm. you know. um, yeah, uh, one million dollars. So we had eight hundred Nigerians with over yeah, eight that much. Dollars. Yes, at that point they were uh, more than that. that Yes, they were I'm, I'm surprised by that number. 9,000 Nigerians with $1 million. That's a lot. $1 million, if you think about it, we definitely had more than that some years ago. You know? Hmm. Uh, I think at some point we had 13,000. But if you look at what the what inflation and uh, the forex situation uh, has done. done. Hmm. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure it has fallen now. Because when we're talking hmm. about this, uh, I think... I think uh, the dollar was 700, you know, so it meant that people had over 700 million Naira, if their money was in Naira, really, you know, but anyway, anyway, so that's that. Now, the categorization was also that we only had four dollar billionaires in Nigeria, just four. Only four. Only four, other than that 2022. Uh, I know now that um, up the dollar has gone back up. So at some point we had more, way more than that. So you can see now that even the rich people, even the billionaires that we had, are getting scared of them losing value or their wealth losing uh, value. value. You know, yeah. so everyone is on the edge. Yeah, and everybody should be on the edge. So you need to be at every point in time. You need to have solid advisors behind you who are making sure that your $1 billion does not become that one million dollars. That's a significant mm. you know, so. Um So numbers we're talking about, 9,008 millionaires. You know, that's high net worth individuals. That's high net worth individuals. Yes. Now, of course, definitely out of that 9,800, 
you now had four billionaires. You understand? Um, we now had a sub further categorization. People who had over hundred million dollars. There are centimillionaires. So definitely, some of those billionaires have fallen into that. And so yeah, anyway, people had yes, people who had over a hundred million dollars. I think they were about uh, three hundred and something. So you had the people. Of twenty twenty two. Abs. I thought I thought twenty twenty two. Yes. Okay. I thought twenty twenty two. You know. I wish I had. Um, I think I I just didn't take those numbers from my head. Um, because I did a comparison between that those figures and what you had in New York alone, alone New York, New York had <laughs> yes. way more. I think New York has the highest number of millionaires in the world currently. Yeah, so if, if you break it down, New York, San Francisco, the other places, you know, and not not stop up. So you know, we simply need to create more wealth. <laughs> Simply need to be created more well. Uh, no and, 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 and and those people who have 50, 50 heads, I'm, I'm talking about the Americans. They don't have. Uh, we, we actually copy the system. And I don't think we're copying it well. And so we need to have more. Uh, we need to have more wealth creators. We need to have more people sharing their knowledge about bigger. Not only sharing their like bringing more people up. You know, empowering uh, more billionaires because trust me, there's a dollar millionaire in my family. I'm sorted. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot more people who are sorted. You know, and then um, we, yeah, as as Nigerians, we 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 have that um, very strong sense of community. We want we're not we're not as selfish as some other uh, people, some other nations like that. So, you know, you bring other people up. So that's just the way to think about it. It requires a lot of a thought. Uh, and I wish the government was able to drive in this. Uh, instead of just trying to tax everybody. You know, problem is that where is the money coming from? So let, let me just pause there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting to see that even for HNIs, you still have to categorize mm. based on their risk tolerance what they should be investing oh, yes. in. Right. You know, so definitely, someone is in definitely. their 70s, the, the restaurants is probably different mm -hmm. from someone in their 30s or in their 50s, you know, and that's, that is even like definitely. same thing for anyone that is listening now. The same thing that these guys are doing, mm -hmm. we can do it as well, where, you know, you need to know your risk tolerance to know that, oh, am I the kind of person that, you know, can go all in on Bitcoin or am I the kind of person that mm -hmm. can exactly. diversify and see how exactly. I can hedge my best? So I think that's really important to really take note mm. of. And the the other thing that yes. I wanted to you know hear about because you mentioned a lot about um, the will I say people with over a million dollars of investable funds as of 2022 mm. being um, at in here in Nigeria, which is a very crazy figure. Um, I've not, I, I don't even mm. know. <laughs> then around 70 millionaires, mm. so people are over like a hundred a hundred. Mm. Got, sorry, sorry, sorry to um, to stop yeah. you. Um, yeah. Also interrupt. Did you expect it to be higher or lower? Lower. <laughs> I expected it to be lower. I wasn't even expecting oh, okay. it. To be... I, I really yeah. expected it to be lower. No, people have money. Trust me, people have money. <laughs> wow. And That's the, the funny wow. thing about it is that out of the four billionaires, only one, um, only one billionaire um, resided at that time. Uh, was residing outside Lagos. Uh, wow. A significant mm. number of the centi millionaires were based in Lagos. Wow! Okay. I need to be going out more. Money so, in I need source. to be going out more. You need to be going out more. <laughs> <laughs> you need to start meeting people. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, but, but, that, um, but that's the, it. That's it. That's interesting. In the, in the aspect of like, um, so now I'm thinking of now trends. So trends and what they're actually investing in. So the. The trend is mm. right now is that I need to protect my wealth. And mm. so I'm sure that people that were, yes. that were sensi millionaires or that were billionaires before might mm. have dropped off due to like economic situation going on right now. People that mm. were millionaires mm. before mm. might have also dropped off as well. 
um, just thinking around, mm-hmm. like if you're mm-hmm. advising that person right now, what's what's the kind of mm-hmm. advice you give them um, at this moment from a mm-hmm. well prevent preservation point of view like what are you telling them at this point Point of view Mm. well it's still the same gospel that we've been preaching uh, which is always have a well-structured portfolio and you can't have that without a advisor Uh, so some people um, so you know how it is when you're dealing with wealthy people and you as the advisor uh, are trying to advise them on how to structure their wealth. Uh, there's yeah. this subtle um, tint of arrogance that sometimes comes in, like, you know, <laughs> what do you know about making money? <laughs> you understand? But it's a very yeah. huge difference between making money and sustaining and protecting that that your assets, you know, your wealth, you understand. So the gospel has always been that okay, talk to a professional, make sure that you have a well balanced portfolio. And what's a portfolio? Simply that okay, you have stocks. Because in the past people just these very rich people just take a large chunk of money and invest in stocks. You know, you know, invest in the stock market and then 2008, 9 came and then a lot yeah. of brand. But think about it: if they had a very balanced portfolio, if they they had they had allocated, if they had sat down with uh, a proper investment banker who would tell them, okay, so uh, put some so percent in this, put some so percent in this, you know, invest in some collectibles, invest in some art, you know, and we have people like that who, who have always. Had that had those things within their disposal, but they never thought of it that way. So the gospel has always been that diversify, diversify, diversify. Make sure that you have a well balanced portfolio that is diverse. It's it's that simple. Nothing beats that. Nothing beats that. You know, before we start going into say, okay, now you now want to go into. I mean, even a well balanced portfolio now. We'll talk about um, alternative asset classes. You know, like. How do you approach real estate now? How do you approach uh, for the adventurous people cryptocurrency? How do you approach yeah. um, art? How do you approach collectibles? Uh, I also have a passion for advising entertainers. You do have wealth, <laughs> and it's not just in the dollars that you earn from your streaming, for example, or the musicians. It's also in your intellectual property. Yes. How are you protecting that? Have you set up a trust? What happens when you die? Look at Mubad. Look at all the funny stories around. <sighs> you know. Oh, right. So, so there are a lot of things to think about. Uh, but best thing to protect your assets: diversify, diversify, diversify. S- sit down with a an expert, uh, an investment advisor, who will tell you, okay, do this, do this, do that, do that. Invest in bonds, invest in this, invest in that. There's so many instruments around this. And then, thankfully, um, uh, people travel a lot also. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> so, um, I mean, explore that abroad if you go on your holidays as well. I, I don't want uh, uh, to come after me to say that. They're not asking other people <laughs> to invest in Nigeria first. <laughs> but but, but, but it's, it's the reality. We live in a globalized... Uh, yeah. People already have homes there. People already have assets there. People have um, assets that are empty abroad. Trust me, I know. Yeah. I know of clients who... Let's not even go into it. <laughs> Money that could be put to better use. Yeah. yeah. Money that could be put to better use. So diversify, diversify, diversify. At all times. Uh, that's the how are you looking for right anybody. just yeah that's just the upset and it's very important like for most people listening now um always try as much as you can to hedge your bets yes. um so if you're if you're yeah. solely conservative person and you've been investing only in bonds maybe you want to dip your hands a little bit and sort of mm. control you know your your investments over time so that mm. you don't lose so much value 
on your own end. Exactly. For newcomers, for exactly. example, now for someone that someone that is listening now, mm -hmm. um, we we you know, for Kebo mm -hmm. now, most of our customers are investing in U.S. denominated assets. You know, almost in every region from mm -hmm. from the U.K. to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and mm. most of them are actually customers and are also listening as well. What would you, what's, and usually what they invest in, in, a, in a year could be mm. as high as for most Nigerian investors, probably as high as $500. Um, for the aspiring investors could be as high as 5,000. So in every single year. Mm. Um, so the question I have for you, mm. like for someone that is new and that's coming up, like what's the best mm. um, advice you can sort of give to that person when they're, Thinking of starting off their investments, thinking of being more serious mm. this year um, with their mm. wealth generally, from your from your perspective, what's mm. the what's the first thing you probably tell them to really do? Well, uh, the first thing I always say to people is that there's always a product for you out there, um, and you know people always I've, I've come across all sorts of excuses. Oh, I don't earn enough to to invest. I don't have blah 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 blah. Well, yeah. Now, I think you're, you're talking about people who have already taken that decision to yeah. invest, you know. Um, it's it's simple. Uh, just find a product that, uh, of course, with the guidance of um, an expert again, you know, find a product that is um, solid enough, regulated enough also, um, for you to invest in. Let, let the let the people who are experts at it actually handle because if you think about it look at the wealthy people who just put all their money in the stocks so up till now we still have a struggle with private clients uh ultra high net worth and high net worth individuals hnis who want to do it themselves because yeah. like i said there's that state uh, of arrogance you know like i've done this how much are you want? Right? You're talking to me like this, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, it's it's that. Just listen to your advisor, you know. Um, get their guidance on what to invest in, so that you don't get burnt early enough. And it's never too early. So if you don't, if you can't afford, and and, and when I say advisor, I'm not I'm not just talking about um, you going to get uh, retain the services of yeah. experts you understand yes uh, it's it's that there's information out there you understand so go to i mean go to a, and i believe that it, an essential part of what you guys do at kebo is that financial literacy bit exactly you're not exactly. just offering them products and services you also Telling them why this is important, exactly. You know, and, and and where this is going. You understand? Because customers, customers, clients need to see that journey. That okay, this is where I'm starting now, and this is where um, I'm, I'm going to end up. I'm likely going to likely going to end up. Exactly. And so I would say to that client that to start from somewhere. That so after crossing that bridge of starting from somewhere, then talk to your to your experts and your experts don't have to be um, so if you decided that okay i want to invest in real estate yeah go to Kebo. look for a a rate to invest in if you know that okay so another mistake that people used to make was that the rich people um up till very recently they still make that mistake anyway they just or when mm -hmm. they have enough money oh i know how it is our uh, real estate uh, I'm talking about the one of the mere old real estate agents, you know. Um, they say, oh, uh, real estate investments never go bad, blah, blah, blah. It is true, right? But to an extent, in, in the sense that but you and I know, the three of us here know of empty homes in Lagos, right? And when I say empty homes, I'm saying people who invested in real estate and don't have occupants in them. Yeah, those zero things have been rates. on the market. Yeah, those things have been on the market for five years. Now tell me if that is wise investment. When you could simply have gone some other route, you understand? 
still in the same real estate space, right? Look for the products that are easier. Share the share the um, risk back to your back to the risk again. Share the risk with other people, you know. Um, so you have products that help you with that, you know. Products that are broken down into simple structures for you to understand and you share the risk. It's that simple. So do rates do. I mean, there's so many ways now, but it starts with having that conversation. Uh, yeah. Having that conversation with professionals. That's what I'll say. Awesome. Thank you so much. I mean, the last question I have from my end is, um, I always like to leave our users with something that is very unique, something that they probably have not heard anywhere, or some secret nuggets um, they've not heard anywhere mm -hmm. else. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I I need you I need you to this is a pro bono advisory mm. service. So like I need you to think of what are the likely industries. Just pick two industries right now that um someone with I don't know, let's say a millionaire should look into. Just mm. two or two financial instruments that they should look into right now. If you have a million, uh, where should I put it? At 7th of February, 2024. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, one millionaire, right? Ah, then no, our man has lost so much value. It's a pity. That used to be heavy money. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be heavy money. Um, so with one millionaire, uh, well, it's, 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 it's simple, really. Um, okay, so let, let me throw you back on the spot. What's the yeah, cheapest yeah. Bucket that you have that you have as Kevin? You can invest on the platform for as little as ten dollars. So that's like fifteen K right now. Fifteen K. Okay. Okay. So I mean for somebody with one million naira, um, remember that we also said that um you need to diversify as so you, with that your one million naira you have to break it down properly. Yeah. Um, so yes, the stock market has started doing well uh, for some time, you know. Uh, but what we always advise uh, for anybody is that just invest in the what they call the bellwether stocks. So the bellwether stocks are the stocks that do that have done well over time. So Nestle, Nigerian Group, Zenith, GTB. Uh, I don't know if GTB is still no, I don't know. <laughs> You know, uh, but then just look at, um, and there are so many, without wanting to adv advertise for any particular company, there are so many uh, companies that give you that information for free, you know. So yeah. subscribe to a newsletter, you know, where you get all those, all that people bombard my emails every day with um, information about what to invest in. So check the Bellwether stocks. Balance that with, oh, right. I always advise that you should have real estate in your portfolio. So, of course, you can't even buy, uh, what, mm -hmm. what, what can I call it now? You can't even buy sand. <laughs> sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so if you want to invest in real estate, yeah, go for the um, retail products, you know, like you yeah. have at Kevo. You know, go for the retail products, invest in that. At some point, ah, this, this is so sad. Because I remember that Ekwe used to be uh, just a few years ago. Go get land in Ekwe for three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. Now you can't even touch. <laughs> you can't touch. You can't, can't touch. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, so uh, as time goes on, you see that things change. You know. But we can't tell everybody that oh, go and make more money. Before you start investing, no, it's start from somewhere. The message is always start, start from, from where you are. One million naira, yeah. Buy some stock, like buy some bellwether stock. Choose carefully with the help of um, um, your robo advisor, uh, because you, those emails you are getting is doing the work of a robo advisor. Really. Leverage on that, you know. Buy some um, real estate. I don't know how much, so you can balance. Um, um, what do you call your units again? Yeah, like tokens. shares, like actional shares. Tokens, tokens, yeah, yeah. Tokens, yeah. So get some tokens. 
um, get some units in, in, in a real estate investment trust. That's a rate, um, if you can. I don't know how much those things are now. Um, but, of course, uh, you can put the rest in the mo a money market fund. Uh, so, a collective mm. investment scheme. Um, which, which, I mean, you have a lot of them doing quite well. You know, of course, the one million that you can't be too greedy. <laughs> yeah, like that's true. That's true. To to double to double it. If you want to double it, just know that you well prepare your doctor to <laughs> give you the injection when you slump. <laughs> when, you, when you invest in when you invest in them, oh my goodness. <laughs> but I think that's th really th th thankfully with, with, with regulation, uh, a lot of the. Um, yeah. Yeah, these schemes have reduced. Thankfully, a lot of people have been exposed over time. So, um, generally, as a rule, anything I don't understand, I don't. Invest. That's that's yeah. the quote. Twitter. That's the quote of today. <laughs> anything you don't understand, <laughs> don't, don't invest. invest it. Uh -huh. I don't yeah. Invest it. So you said three yes. three very key things for investing with one millionaire. So that's our secret nugget for today. Number one. Yeah. Bellwether mm -hmm. stocks, not just stocks, but bellwether stocks. You mentioned real estate. Mm -hmm. Not just yeah. real estate, because your money cannot buy sand. I got this to doctor. Mm. But <laughs> and not all those retail products. They offer you, they offer you <laughs> rice for, for land. <laughs> oh, wow. I want this cow, I'm, cow for land. I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I mean, without naming and shaming, <laughs> I did yeah, help. We know, a, a if you know, you cousin. know. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> We'll still get you know, they, so anything that any, any offer that is just too good to be true just yeah, yeah. It's if, the, a, a, a proper a rich person and when i say rich mm. person the, the it, and it's it, so amazing to look in the, into the minds of high net worth individuals they are very smart you know? mm. so a, a typical high net worth individual you can appeal to them with the offer of a bag of rice i'm already paying you some fantastic amount of money, fantastic, fantastic sum of money to buy land. And you are, you are trying to attract me with a bag of rice and goats, you know, or rap, you know. It, it doesn't make sense. They look like, I can afford this thing myself. Why, why are you offering me? Yeah. yeah, why now? Of course, I, I'm not saying that rich people like free things, though. Do you understand? Yeah. But then it has to be something. Sometimes it's, it's still something intangible. Sometimes it's just rebate. Rebate, you know, mm. you know, cash back, so something like that. Exact cash back, things like that. Yeah, yeah. So think like a rich person. <laughs> think like a rich think person. Like so, we will start wrapping up now. But you mentioned something yeah. earlier, and I, I noted it down. You talked about how you had started doing something around financial literacy. I don't know oh, if yes. you remember saying that. Yeah, so can you yes, share? Yes, yes. Yeah. Can you share so that people who are listening in can also like be mm. part of that and can mm. benefit mm. from Doctor Shim? Yeah. Okay. So 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 I believe. I mean, I think I've, I've actually we've dealt with a lot of what um, what I had in mind really, which is that yeah. you know I, I traced my origin, and yeah, how I got to develop this mindset, and of course the natural thing for me to do was. Uh, some years ago, I decided to set up something called Financial Literacy and Technology Solution. So ignore the technology bits for now, you know. Okay. Uh, we're, we're dealing with the financial literacy part. So the financial literacy part is simply just to democratize financial literacy um, mm. in Nigeria. Uh, uh, and what I mean by that is that I believe that we'll have a better society. We'll have more financially well people you know there's financial the concept of financial wellness as well you know, yes we have the cost um financially well people if we tackle the issue of financial literacy you know we have we can see the numbers already um yeah there's no middle class obviously anymore middle we, class there's no middle class i mean mm. who are the middle class in nigeria really you know, everybody is one think about it i always say it's anybody is um okay so when i decided to leave my last job for example one of the key considerations was the fact that i won't have hfo co uh, coverage anymore 
Um, so I made arrangements. I started making arrangements to say, man, you can't afford to fall sick in Nigeria. Everybody, mm. almost everybody is, almost everybody is one sickness away from total poverty. Mm. Think about it. Yeah. Um, if you fall ill and it's mm-hmm. something that's, that's something that's like serious. Yeah. serious. One yeah. visit to the hospital, all your life savings are gone. All your life savings yeah. are gone. So, so, the, so does that mean that the middle class... Hmm, I'm, I'm still trying to understand that statement. Because me, I, I, traditionally, I've always defined middle class as people. Mm. I think those... Mm. People, for example, people, families, household uh, mm. between, I think, 10 or 15 million, something like that. So now mm. I'm hearing mm. you say that there's no middle mm. class. I'm just like... Mm-hmm. It's a radical opinion. And I'll explain why I feel that. I like the figure that you quoted. So you have a lot of people who look up to people who earn maybe 10, 15 million pounds, right? Yes. But think about it. One visit to the general hospital. I'm not talking about... Uh, I'm not talking about the private hospital. One visit to the general hospital, if you have one member of the family has one serious illness and wipe out everything. In 1998, mm. now this is a personal story. Um, mm. In 1998, and that particular year, I believe I wiped away from my memory because it was traumatic. In 19, I watched everything my father had worked for go down the drain. Um, and it was uh, as a result of his illness. So he was sick for four months before he eventually passed. And then you can watch a loved one deteriorate. You, know, you have to spend money on yeah. bills. But I remember back yeah. then that the procedure we were doing every week costs, I can't remember how much it was, but I think it was about 11000 in 1998. Now, 11000 in 1998. Was that was a lot of money yeah that's a lot of money then yeah money, you know so and we were middle class and where you were in the supposed middle class yes mm. yes you know you were middle class now think of what inflation has done over the years yes uh, where is the middle class really who would you say everybody's one sickness away don't let me say so don't let me say sickness alone one calamity away from we... from from the people who are in the lower rank, the poor people. And that's the truth. No. If you lose your job mm-hmm. today, if you lose your job today, even with all your savings, do you understand? How long would it take you to so... um, going to uh, going back to ah? I can't feed. You know. Actually, you understand? I can't mm-hmm. cater for the family. I understand. Those are those are the realities. So where's the middle class really? You have a mm. you have middle class in society. You know that there's, there's infrastructure, some sort of guaranteed income, even if things don't go right. You know, there's nothing like okay. that. Okay, huh? okay, I, I I really understand it now because you're layering mm. you're mm. layering different things now. You're talking about yes, a country with infrastructure. You're talking about yes. guaranteed income. Then you're also talking yeah. about things like the rampant inflation that we currently have. Because yes, paracetamol two years ago is not the price of paracetamol now. Especially, that's I don't all, know. That's all, that's all. I, I don't know if you, okay, you, you are in the country, so you probably know about the whole drugs going up by 3,000 oh, 3, percent. And the whole, definitely. it's been a whole, whole season. Definitely. So I, I, I definitely I had a understand. Cough. I had a cough. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I had a cough. No, 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 no. I had, I had malaria some some days ago, and I had a, it came with a cough, uh, sore throat, and I wanted to bite. How, how are you feeling now? No, no, no quite, quite well. Uh, you don't have a choice. Okay, awesome, awesome. Sick in this country. You have to, be, you have to use everything. Use that boy. Use everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I, I went into a a pharmacy to buy Benelli, and something just said because. Part of financial literacy that I, part of financial literacy that I'm teaching myself now, you know, as as, as an advocate of it, is that look, every couple count, you know. So I wanted before I used to just go to the have a rough idea of how much that thing will cost, you know. So I'll just go without checking whether 
um, that could have gone up, that the price of what I'm buying has gone up, and it's, you know, just pay for it. And then somebody else told me, she asked ask for the price of that beverage, and it was 15000 What? 15, How much was it before? Yes, Benelli. How much was it before? Benelli. Benelli was probably three. At the very expensive... Um, at the um, big, at the big boy stores, at, at the, the big, big pharmacies, pharmacies, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 What? Probably three thousand. Yeah. Health is really well. So, <laughs> ah, health. No. Health. Health. Health you, 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 you know the the, the, the concept <sighs> of financial wellness. All those things are tied together. You know. Mm. Yeah. And that's why when people fall into poverty, you know, and you know, poverty is also layered. Um, yeah. When people fall into poverty their health, without them having any obvious illness before, you find that yeah. I mean, even falling into depression is is, 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 is your health suffering, you know? Yes, very true. It's a medical con- de- depression is a medical condition. So, there's so many things, you know. Now, who will take that person? Who? Everybody just, I'm on, no grief for anybody. <laughs> no grief for Everybody no, is on, no, is on no, no grief, grief for anybody. anybody. So, you can't afford to be ill in any form. You can't afford not to go out there and make money. You can't afford. You know, otherwise, you're falling into poverty. It's, mm. it's, 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 a, it's a big deal. Mm. <laughs> so, Shem, I, I kind of so. distracted you. Not distracted, but I yes. kind of swept the conversation. The, the, so originally, yes, yes, the yes. original question yeah. was along the lines of how can people listening now mm. take part of your initiative on financial literacy. So, oh, yes. So you yes. just speak on oh. that so that we can wrap up and... Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so... Yes. So, so, um, um, so I set that up um, in order to democratize um, you know, financial, financial literacy. literacy in Nigeria, mm-hmm. you know, to break down, essentially, uh, I, I won't be doing... Um, so it was something I had suspended. I registered in, in a number of years ago. But I suspended because of um, my nine to five. You understand. Um, so I'm back to it now, and the aim is to make all this just like we've been speaking all day, break down the concept of um, money, you know, into very simple language, you know. So I'm not going to be using words like bellwether stocks, <laughs> you know, even though yeah, it will be part of that literacy. But it's just to get people to. So of course, there's a blog. There's there are different kinds of things. So there's there's the, a heavy dependence on on, on social media. Uh, so all that is in the works, uh, and we're launching we launching very soon. You know. Um, okay. So everybody is there a wait list? Tap. Is there is there a wait list? Yes, 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 yes. And the website will be back up very soon. Yeah. So okay. Be able so to, please, can you let us know so that we can also share? And you know the people will be definitely. Asking. So okay, definitely, awesome. definitely. So, awesome. so as soon as it's awesome. it's, it's up, uh, I'll just contact you, and then awesome. you can help awesome. share. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, doctor. So, do you have any final words for us <laughs> as we wrap up now? <laughs> had a very insightful conversation. If you leave us, we will stay here till you. We will stay here in the next five hours. <laughs> you are managing, you are managing many things. So, just yes, give us yes, a, yes. a short uh, wrap up. So that we can go well, from there. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'll just encourage everybody because this is um, we're in very difficult times. Uh, I have had no doubt about us getting to where we are currently. Um, I've always known that we'll always get here. So very difficult times. Um, problem is that we got there faster than we envisaged. But I would encourage everybody mm. to ensure that they take advantage of any opportunity that they get. Any. And when I say any opportunity, it doesn't have even have to be a financial opportunity. Um, this is a time when nobody can afford to be slack, if you get what I mean. Uh, yeah. So any opportunity to make a change, any opportunity to make the life of anyone better, any opportunity to earn more income, any opportunity to, to do anything better now, just do it. <laughs> you know, um, start up whatever you want to start up. Um, save a lot, don't borrow. 
that's that's for another podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> because I actually have a question <laughs> about that. Well, let, let's, uh, let's 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 wrap it up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to 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 and if you're owing already, you know, find ways to 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 pay up because you can't afford to for your whatever you have stored up to lose value. You know? So just keep your head up, everyone, and. Um, Keep trudging on. We'll get out of this. Song. I don't want to sound like you. Yeah. Yeah. you just have to be optimistic. Everybody has to be up optimistic because we need we are the happy of the nation. Yeah. yeah. So I'll just thank you, so, thank you so thank you so 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 much Shim, for your time. Thank you for your thank wisdom you. You. for the nuggets uh, for the facts for the for the <laughs> everything. Thank you so much for being on today's <laughs> episode. We really learned a lot. I was literally, I was literally writing down stuff on my like, okay, no, 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 okay, wait, wait, wait speaking too fast, no, 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 no. So thank you so much for, and also we we'll do well to share. Please thank let you. us also know. I'm repeating again. Please let us know when the initiative is out. I believe because I handle the community for cable. Yes. We have a community focused on financial literacy. I don't mm, believe one mm. person is enough to yes. cover. There are so many illiterate people no, no, financially that no one company can cover everybody. So the yep, back is, is, yep, a, is yep. a lot of people. Very so right. please let us know so that we can Very also right. promote that and get more people enlightened. Because Definitely. just like you said, the more wealth, the more wealth creators we have, the better the yes. better the net effect on the economy and the country as a whole. Exactly. So thank you so much. Exactly. Uh, Jam, do you have any exactly. final words as we wrap up now? I think oh, okay. So I think oh, I should just yeah. uh, wrap up it's from right. there. So, yes. thank you everyone for joining us on today's episode. Uh, once again, for the fifteenth time, thank you, Doctor Shew. He's not he's not actually a doctor. So if you see him outside, that you call him doctor, and he's confused, it's just for this episode. So, so you know, there's a way, there's a way, there's a way where someone speaks. They speak with intelligence. They speak with experience. The only that's why the highest degree you ever get is a doctor. <laughs> they don't call you. Uh, anyways, you guys get the point. Well, thank you so much for joining. Don't forget to share this podcast with your friends. Don't forget to join the tribe. Don't forget to also check out what we are offering on cable. Even Dr. Shewu has recommended us. So thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your... I don't know where you are listening to this, but enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.